Hello folks and welcome back to True Crime Phenomenon. This is Josh coming back to you with another video. I just want to start off by thanking all of my subscribers for the support. Now, for those of you that are new to the Jeremy DeWitt content, here's a little background to give you some context. Now, Jeremy DeWitt is a serial police impersonator currently in prison for multiple felony convictions. His police impersonation goes all the way back to 1998 when he was kicked out of the Police Explorers program for stealing $14 of gas and a Slim Jim after showing his Police Explorers badge. I'm just kidding about the whole Slim Jim part. Now, Jeremy started a funeral escort company that was under investigation by the Orange County Sheriff's Office called Metro State. Now, to combat the investigation led by Corporal Ramsey and Sergeant Vidler, Jeremy would send in his employees and friends to make complaints against Vidler and Ramsey. When this didn't work, he recruited attorney Michael Breen by arming him with edited videos to take them to internal affairs. Now, Michael was interviewed by Sergeants Mitchell and Vasquez, and Sergeant Mitchell claims Michael Breen was going into business with Jeremy DeWitt. Now, you can actually hear those interviews on my playlist, Internal Affairs, DeWitt Fiddler. Now, this is important because Michael Breen is friends with the sheriff, John Mina. This led to Sergeant Fiddler getting sacked and Corporal Ramsey uh, getting unpaid suspension. Now, this interview is between Sergeant Justin Wall and Stephen Foster, former assistant general counsel for the Orange County Sheriff's Office. Now, the reason why this particular interview is so important is due to the fact that Jeremy DeWitt would constantly bring up attorney general Foster, uh, attorney uh, Stephen Foster, uh, general counsel for the OCSO, and say, hey, you guys, uh, Foster approved this. Stephen Foster approved my uniform. He approved these weapons that I hold. He approved all these different things, which is just patently false, and you'll you'll hear it here in the testimony. Now, this is all stemming from the arrest of Jeremy DeWitt on March 23rd, 2021, and uh, Ramsey's uh, subsequent interview. So, Vidler arrested him, and uh, Ramsey interviewed him after the arrest. Now, like I told you before, Jeremy DeWitt claims to have had com uh, communication with Mr. Foster regarding things that he can do with his business. Now, uh, Stephen Foster recalls meeting with Jeremy DeWitt before October 2018 when he retired. Uh, he's, he believes this is most likely late 2017, early 2018. And he said he met with Jeremy DeWitt and his attorney to talk about, you know, funeral procession issues. Doesn't recall conversation around pepper ball or any other items he, he might carry on the duty belt. He vaguely recalls uniform uh, discussion, but not picking out what's appropriate for Metro State. Now, uh, he says, uh, goes on to say that OCSO cannot approve uniforms, you know, can only basically give uh, general guidance. You know, OCSO uh, legal counsel does not give legal advice to citizens, only to the sheriff and the sheriff's office. And uh, he actually covers the kind of conversations he would have had with Vindler and Ramsey, which will get a little bit more into detail on that. Other than that, please like, share, comment, and subscribe. Let me know what you're thinking down below in the comments. And I'll catch you on the other side. Okay. My name is Sergeant Justin Wall of the Orange County Sheriff's Office Professional Standards Section. Today's date is May 10th, 2021, and the current time is 8.53 a.m. I'm located at... Uh, the Orange County Sheriff's Office Professional Standards located at 2500 West Colonial Drive and I'm conducting this interview by phone. I'm interviewing Mr. Stephen Foster who is a former uh, general or assistant general counsel for the Sheriff's Office, is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, Alright, Mr. Foster, are you aware that I'm recording this interview? Yes, I am. Has anyone threatened, coerced, or offered you any preferential treatment to give this statement? Are you under the influence of drugs or alcohol and may impair your testimony? No, sir. All right, and I'm going to swear you in. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you are to provide will be true and correct? Yes, I do. Okay. So, um, as we spoke briefly about, uh, I'm conducting an investigation uh, regarding uh, a few individuals, specifically the uh, arrest of a Mr. Jeremy DeWitt on March 23rd. 
2021, um, he was arrested by uh, Sergeant Keith Vidler, and then uh, Corporal Ramsey conducted an interview uh, with Mr. DeWitt after that uh, arrest. And your name has come up a couple of times um, by at least Mr. DeWitt uh, claiming that uh, he had uh, had communication with you uh, regarding some things that he uh, can and can't do related to his business. Um, at least that's what he alleges, and so that's what uh, I wanted to discuss with you. Um, are you familiar with Mr. DeWitt? I, I am. Okay. Um, and you're familiar with, uh, Sergeant Ramsey, I'm sorry, uh, Sergeant Vidler and Corporal Ramsey? Yes, sir. Okay. And, um, have you ever, uh, had discussions with Sergeant Vidler, uh, regarding the, uh, conduct of Mr. DeWitt? Probably, but I don't specifically recall any conversation with Sergeant Vidler. Okay, how about with Corporal Ramsey? No, I don't recall any conversation with um, Corporal Ramsey. Okay. Um, as as part of your duties, you were you were uh, legal counsel for the sheriff's office, correct? I was one of five. So it would not been, have been out of the realm of possibility for them, for Sergeant Vidler or Corporal Ramsey to seek out legal advice from you? Oh, not at all. And I can, I have probably had multiple conversations with both of them over the years. Um, I don't specifically remember any conversations about Jeremy DeWitt with either of them. Okay. Um... Specifically, uh, do you remember a, a meeting with uh, Mr. DeWitt? Yes. Do you remember when, about when that t took place? Mm. Well before October of 2018. Which is when you retired, correct? Correct. Okay. Um, so. Do you remember uh, a year or, or uh, a particular year or just before 2018? Uh, it was probably um, in either late 2019 or early 2018, but I, uh, without, without having access to my SO calendar, I probably could never give you a really good date. Yeah, okay. Well, it, would, it wouldn't have been in 2019. You, I'm sorry, you said 2019. Um, uh, did you mean 2017? 2017, yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, um, that meeting, uh, you, you you did have a meeting with Mr. DeWitt, right? Uh, we had a meeting with Mr. DeWitt and his attorney uh, present. Okay, and what was the reasoning for that meeting? Uh, he and his attorney um, called and asked if we would meet with him. Okay. We wanted to talk about the issues uh, involving Mr. DeWitt and uh, running funeral uh, running funeral processions. Do you remember any uh, specific conversation about? about a, uh, whether or not uh, Mr. DeWitt could carry a pepper ball gun in a holster on his duty belt. I, I have absolutely no recollection of any conversations about the carrying of pepper guns um, by anybody but us, Mr. DeWitt. Okay. Um, was there discussion about any other weapons that uh, Mr. DeWitt was allowed to carry on his gun belt? I had no recollection of uh, talking about weapons in his gun belt at all. Okay. Was there discussion about what uh, he could could not wear as part of a uniform? We 
probably had um, discussions about clothing, but nothing specific, like you can't wear a green shirt uh, or green pants and white shirt. Um, the discussion would have been along the lines of, you know that it's illegal for someone to wear clothing that would represent themselves as a law enforcement officer. Okay, so that was kind of the gist of, of the meeting? Yes. Okay, so when Mr. DeWitt makes statements such as, uh, I met with, Ms. with Steve Foster or uh, the Sheriff's Office approved this and that, uh, are those statements accurate? Uh, they would not be accurate. I would have never approved. Nobody from the Sheriff's Office would have ever approved. Um, you can wear this, you can't wear that. Uh, this is allowed, this is not allowed. Okay. Uh, does the Sheriff's Office give legal advice to citizens like that? Absolutely not. Okay. Okay, and to your recollection, do you recall any uh, legal advice given regarding to to Sergeant Vidler or to Corporal Ramsey regarding um, what they could or could not make arrests for regarding Mr. Dewitt? I can narrow. I can narrow it down uh, further if, if you need to. I, I'm specifically. I'm, I'm looking for whether. Do you recall any discussions whether or not a a carrying of a pepper ball gun in a holster on a gun belt by Mr. Dewitt was a criminal offense, and whether or not um, you provided any legal advice to Corporal Ramsey or Sergeant Bidler uh, as to whether or not that was a criminal offense, and, and whether they could make an arrest. I do not recall having a conversation with them about carrying concealed weapon. Okay. Um, I would have had conversations with them, and, and I don't specifically remember any incident, but it wouldn't be beyond the normal course of my duties at the Sheriff's Office to have had a conversation these are the types of things that people would, would you would be looking for to see if, a, if an individual is impersonating a law enforcement officer. Okay. Um, and, uh, and we would talk about just different activities that, that they would do, including what they may or may not be wearing, including actions that they take, um, overt actions like, hey, I work for the Orange County Sheriff's Office, um, to subtle actions by giving commands like a law enforcement officer would give a command. And so, but I, I think that the overwhelming majority of our conversations about uh, uh, Jeremy DeWitt and, and um, his company would have been involved in uh, impersonating a law enforcement officer. Um, as arrestable offenses that he may have been engaged in. And the only other one that I can think of off of the top of my head would have been Wolf on One Reckless Driving um, because that's a criminal offense that a person can be arrested for. Okay. So that, that I, I am reasonably certain that that's the focus of all of the conversations that I would have had about behavior of Jeremy DeWitt that may constitute criminal behavior. Okay. All right. Very good. Um, is there anything else that you know about this investigation you'd like to add at this time? Um, no, I don't, I don't think so. Okay. Uh, no, I don't, I don't think so. Okay.
The current time is 9.04 a.m. and that concludes this interview. All right, folks, that's going to wrap it up for this one. I'll catch you on the next video. Thank you so much for watching. This is Josh with True Crime Phenomenon, out.